Thank you for the introduction, Lori. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Matt Johnson. I sell real estate. That's the long and short of it. You all know what realtors do, so I'm not going to get too far into the weeds there. Um, but I've been doing that for 20 years. But when I got into real estate, I learned that there was a few different ways to go out and find business, right? Like there's the cold calling, there's the door knocking, there's the uh, all the different things, you name it. And my daughter was born in 2009. At that time, I wanted to get a little bit more involved in the community. And I had done networking already at that point, but the first step in getting more involved in my community was joining the Chamber of Commerce. And at that time, it was a much different Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> um, we've, we've grown two times, probably more than twice, the number of members since then. Um, there was a time where I was the ambassador committee. I was the one talking to the business owners and running around with the scissors and the ribbon. We didn't have staff at the time to do it. For about a month or two, we were in between the executive directors and there was like a front desk person. It was, it was a little crazy, a little hairy back then. We're talking like 2009, 10, 11. Remember that whole Great Recession thing, right? Um, but the cool thing is, is the chamber was the first step for me in building a very strong network of people that I could turn to. Uh, whether it be for advice, for professional services, and of course for referrals, which is typically why we network, right? So a little bit more about my background. Um, ooh, I got to turn the power on. There we go. Uh, I was born and raised in Door County, Wisconsin. I grew up over there, and I moved to the Twin Cities in 1997 for college. Went to the University of Minnesota, got a bachelor's degree in golf course management. It's actually called environmental horticulture with emphasis in turf grass management. It's a mouthful. I learned how to grow grass. Um, moved up to North Oaks Golf Club after I finished college. A little thing called 9-11 happened, if you remember that. They started closing golf courses after that, so the job prospects weren't so hot. Uh, been licensed now for 20 years, both Minnesota and Wisconsin, and upwards of 1,000 sales. I'm almost there. <laughs> um, but that's the ninja right there, back in 1987. I got a, I got a gi for uh, Christmas or something like that. That's my grandma's house. I figured it out because of the trim on her bookshelves. But my mom sent me that. If anybody wants to buy Girl Scout cookies, by the way, it's a shameless promotion here. My stepdaughter, Emmy, is a Girl Scout. And uh, I'll get you the QR code or the link later. She's been selling Girl Scout cookies. So uh, some of you don't know, but I'm the founder and CEO and owner of the Anew Real Estate Group. And what are we? A new real estate is a real estate services business. We provide you know, home buyers, sellers, investors, families looking to move up, down, reinvest in uh, new construction. I do a lot of different business in, in those areas. I love the new construction stuff. Um, but it's a synergistic team environment focused on growth and abundance. Uh, besides owning it, I am no different than the other partners that I have in my business. Uh, we all operate on the same, the same level. There's no, you know, I'm the key guy and there's other people that work for me. No, we're all business partners and that's the kind of environment that I like to be in. And we're passionate about building relationships and strengthening our community. Uh, hopefully that shows through in how I show up in your world. Um, my networking background, so it actually all started for me back in the frat boy days. Um, I was new to the Twin Cities in 97. I didn't know anybody uh, besides a few people I met in the dorms um, that first you know, weekend there, right? The, the big like nervous meet your roommate weekend and all that stuff. Well, it turns out that my roommate, the guy next door, and then two guys from down the hall, and then one guy from across the hall, we all joined the same fraternity in the spring of 98 together. And uh, what I liked about it was kind of a blue-collar fraternity. Nobody was, uh, mommy and daddy weren't paying their way. We all kind of paid our own way. Uh, we worked part-time jobs. We, we did a lot of hands-on type stuff. We were the group that decided to wire the whole fraternity house with Cat5 cable the year before they came out with wireless internet. <laughs> yeah. Great idea. We spent the whole Christmas break doing that. We thought it was just the coolest thing because I could play music on my computer from the guy on the, you know, on the other floor's computer and you know, all that kind of Napster was cool back then, if you remember those days. Um, but after I got done, I thought, well, what do I do now? And uh, I realized there was nothing for alumni in my fraternity to do. So what I did is I started an alumni chapter, it's called. It's for all Delta Chi alumni here in the Twin Cities market, uh, whether they are from this area or you know, went to school elsewhere and then moved here for work. We get together and network about six times a year, a couple of different big events. Uh, we just had one on the, the AFC and FC championship weekend uh, down at one of my brother's restaurants in Burnsville. So that was fun. Um, we also started a scholarship foundation at that time too, a 501c3 that goes to providing scholarships back to the active chapter. And with that effort, we've raised uh, well into the six figures now in the last 10 years of money to be set aside. and Someday, someday be an endowment type uh, opportunity where uh, we don't have to work for that money anymore. Um, but that's been a fun, been a fun experience. 
<clears throat> I served on the Alumni Board of Trustees and the Historic Housing Foundation. That's the group that owns and maintains the property. Uh, of course, the Woodbury Chamber of Commerce, I've been on the board of directors. I served six years there, ambassador many times, both before and after my board commitment. I was this golf uh, scholarship chair for several years, and I've been involved in basically every other committee to some degree, <laughs> I think, over the years. Currently, I'm uh, the board chair for the Woodbury Community Foundation. Uh, we're like the uh, United Way for a nonprofit here in Woodbury. We like to serve and help other organizations uh, do what they do better. Um, our big fundraiser is Fest, Friends Fest. It's April 28th this year. If you guys are interested in buying tickets, they are already for sale online. Just go to woodburyfoundation.org. And then, of course, um, I help with the Business Education Partnership. I've been you know, teaching at the Woodbury High School and some stuff like that as well. At my uh, Lions Club, I was through the whole board of directors. I'm the immediate past chair, kids site chair. I was the membership chair for a while. And then, of course, the PR chair for several years before my friend John took it over over there. Appreciate uh, all you do to help serve in our Lions Club. Um, and then Master Networks was a networking group, much like a BNI. That's a more intimate uh, setting where you get together and you really intentionally network with people, get to know them deeper. One to ones, they like to call them in the BNI world. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. And I served on a lot of other fun things. Buzz through that. What do I like to do? I like to bikes. I like both pedal and my Harley Davidson. Uh, we do a lot of boating, skiing, water skiing, fun stuff like that. So. Uh, but what has networking done for me, right? Why, why do you do networking? Why, why did I just show you five pages of all the things and stuff that I've done over the last 20 years? Um, it's because it's grown me a database with 1,547 contacts. I call those advocates, people that I would expect that would be likely to do business with me or would potentially refer a business opportunity to me. That means they're going to get a certain level of my time. They're not my core advocates. Core advocates get the next level, and that includes some other fun stuff. Um, but 5,500 plus Mets, that's just the ones that I have in the, in the database. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of people that I, I go in there, I'm like, why is that person not in there? It's crazy, you know? Challenges of the database, you gotta maintain it and manage it, and we have a full-time person at uh, Anu that, that does that on my behalf, so. 212 referrals. I just looked this up this morning as I was updating the slideshow I actually created in 2018 uh, for my Kelly Williams office. So to give you some perspective, it's been going on a while. Um, in 10 years, that's been over 40% of my gross commissions earned. Um, if you include my repeat or past clients who come back on an annual basis, you're at about 82% of my overall annual earnings, right? Everybody's heard of the 80-20 principle, Pareto's principle. No, back at some Bill Fredo, El Prado, whatever, in, in Italy years ago realized that 20% of the country maintained 80% of the country's wealth. Um, it applies in many, many different other capacities throughout the world. Uh, for me, 80% of my business comes from 20% of my efforts. That's my repeat and referrals, right? And so the other extra 20 that I have to grind for, right, that I have to take sign calls and, like, do web leads and, like, cold calling and all these hard, like, treacherous things that you really kind of make you shrink up and get fearful of, of you know, finding business opportunities. That's the hard stuff. If you want to grind for that, you can. But the meat and potatoes comes from the 40 referral and 40 repeat. And it's just every year. It's, I mean, it's like 38, 42. And, but over, <laughs> over time, it, it shows that it works, right? And so last but not least, it gave me my life back, right? Um, I remember the, the first five years of my real estate career. I, I call it the five-year hump. If a realtor can make it five years, then maybe they got a chance of staying in the business. The numbers support that as well, statistically. Um, most realtors, 85% fail out by the third year, 95% by the fifth year. Um, but if you can make that five-year hump, the cool thing is, is like your friends and family start believing in you. Because we all got that one friend that like got into real estate, and you're like, uh, I might refer somebody to them if I don't really know them, but I don't know if I'd trust them with my business. If you're honest with yourself, that's what you're really thinking, right? I, that's the thing about me, Phoenix. I just sometimes say things that, you know, I'm not afraid if they're going to hurt people's feelings. So <laughs> it's just the, the dirty truth is like, you don't know, right? Like you, they're nice, but do they really know what they need to know at this point? I don't know, right? Any my realtor friends in the room, I see you some back there from Cardinal. You don't really know what you don't know those first few years, right? And tell you what, 20 years later, I'm still learning things every day. There's been no two opportunities that have been the same. So 
But getting my life back was the reason for all this. I wanted to be able to spend more time with my kids and, of course, enjoy the things we love to do. <clears throat> so why does networking work? It provides value. You provide value and you build relationships, right? If somebody comes to me with a question or a need, um, I make it my mission to help them figure it out, to find the right person, point them in the right direction, make that connection, give them my, my best effort to help provide them value, to, to lift them up, to create a, a better opportunity for them. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, and building relationships is, you know, obviously the goal. It increases your reach. Uh, I want to talk about contact bubbles. Everybody knows in the country about, I think it's 80 people or something cute like that. Maybe it's 320. It doesn't matter. You think about your little bubble, you know that many people. But each of the people you know also has their bubble. And there may be some crossover, like with your family and your closer friends, right? Your college friends. Like, But think about that one person you just met. They might know a completely three different 320 people than you do, right? And as you grow those contact bubbles, you get further and further reach, right? You, you reach further into that opportunity. And that's why growing my database that I shared earlier has been such a big focus of mine and was very early on in my chamber career because I want to be very intentional about the people that, number one, I was networking with, who were building relationships with the right people who got it, who understood the value of this, and would then someday pay off like it is for me. Uh, there's a handful of people that um, I think about in my career. Some of you may know like Troy Miller. He was a big... Uh, friend of mine influence. We cut a lot of ribbon together my first year and two in the chamber. Um, speaking of which, I, I'm trying to figure out, Lori, how can I find out how many ribbon cuttings I've been to? It's got to be into the like two to three hundred range. I got to be honest with you all. Um, Brian Johnson, uh, Nikki Robbins, right? Some of these people you might know, but the, they were big parts of my career in the chamber and then of course moving forward till today. And dozens and dozens of referrals and business opportunities have come of those relationships over time. Um, what's the best thing about having a, um, a contact in the chamber, somebody that you network with? Uh, they're your walking and talking billboards, right? They have their ear to the ground. They're out there listening to the community, finding out what's going on and how, um, how can they help you increase you know, your reach, how can you help them increase theirs, right? Finding those, those connections. It's amazing the law of reciprocity, how, how uh, the, the universe brings people into your life at certain times. Um, you know, there was, there was a project that we were embarking on at the Community Foundation recently. Um, I had a meeting with a person. She referred me to this other individual that had just moved to our community and was like the ideal person to do the job to help make this thing all work out. And I was like, okay, that's weird, right? But that happens more often than you think about it. But you got to be able to put yourself out there. You got to you got to take that first step and have those first conversations. And of course, ultimately, why? Because people do business with people they know, they like, and they trust. And it's really important that those three key elements are hit. They got to know you, right? That's the meeting. They got to like you, and then they got to trust. Trust that you can take care of them. So. This is the part where you get to talk. I'm going to take a little break. But where can you network? Shout it out. Not everybody at once. Church. Church, good one. Community, mm -hmm. community events. Rasmussen or chamber? Just chamber. Yes. <laughs> community events, sure. Like Woodbury Days. Golf events. Yeah. Everywhere. Dang it, John. Such an overachiever. That's the point. You can network anywhere. You can network everywhere. So why not do it where you enjoy being? Why not do something you enjoy doing and then use that as an opportunity to network, right? So you got to know your role at networking events, right? We're going to go through the four steps here. The first one we're going to talk about is being prepared before the event. That's on the front end. Number two, we're going to talk about how to work the crowd. That's while you're at the event. And then, of course, to-dos before you leave the parking lot. These are some of the crucial follow-up steps and how you capitalize on that. I'll give you some tips and tricks on all of those categories as we move through them. If anybody has any questions at any point, please feel free and raise your hand. Any questions at this time? 
Okie dokes. So number one, know your audience, right? What kind of event are you going to? Is this going to be uh, your Good Morning Woodbury event <clears throat> where people show up in uh, uh, sweats and jumpsuits and they're health and wellness people that uh, or they're morning people, right? Is this going to be your chamber luncheon where it's your city employees and your bankers and they're all wearing suits, right? Or is this your business after hours where it's salespeople, self-employed individuals, right? A little more outgoing type folks, right? They're all going to have a different vibe. They're all going to have a different experience. And by the way, please don't ever run out of coffee if you host Good Morning Woodbury. Mm -hmm. Bring your cards in a Sharpie. If you've ever been to Kelly Jana Burns' classes or luncheons on uh, networking, she talks about the Sharpie and, and uh, the business card. Uh, has everybody attended that one? No? No? Okay, quick idea. What's this for? Business card. What's the? To win the prize. <laughs> What's the idea of a business card? Does anybody else have a business card? Anybody else have a business card with them? You have a business card? The idea of my business card, Drew, is so that I can get yours. Thank you. Because without it, I don't have the power to follow up. That's the only reason I ever carry these things. And I know a lot of people don't carry them. I know there's certain tricks you can do on your phone and RFID codes and cute stuff, but you got to have the ability to follow up, number one. You have a great conversation with somebody, you get their information, you go through all the hearing about this, that, and the other thing, and, and you feel like it's really a great connection. And then you get done and you're in your car and you go, oh, shoot, who is that? How do I follow up? Where do I find them? I mean, Google works, and yeah, there's other ways of, of digging it up, but obviously this is the best source of that. You've got to be able to follow up. And that's how you begin to capitalize. Um, the Sharpie piece, you can write down, I met Drew, he talked about this, he might be interested in that thing, right? Just a couple quick little notes. That way when you're back to your computer, you can follow up. I like to just take a picture of it and send it to my assistant. She puts it into our computer and everything happens from there. That's why you get a business card. Uh, practice your elevator pitch. So uh, elevator pitch is just a quick five second blurb about what you do, right? It's not. It's not getting into the weeds. I'm Matt. I'm a real estate agent. I help people buy and sell homes. You don't really need to know more than that, right? I don't say I help people find their dream home. Because we, we don't, we, that's not the, the elevator. That's not the five second pitch. That's the, okay, we're going to sidebar for a few minutes over here, right? And sometimes you get to do that. And practice it out loud. Be comfortable saying it. Sometimes I say it to my kids and they're like, what? <laughs> Their dad's weird. They know that. And then my other point, have a wingman. It's always fun to know somebody else at the event. But for the love of God, don't just sit and talk to that same person that you were with. <laughs> um, I have a, a, a friend who is in, or was in business with his wife. Um, and I met them. Actually, she recruited me to the chamber. Um, some of you might know who that is. But they would do what they call divide and conquer because they already knew each other, right? <laughs> they're in business together, they had kids, they had life. They would go out and meet different people and have different conversations, and then they could bring that back to their business. And that was a great way for them to go out and double their investment of time in going to a luncheon or a networking meeting. So have a wingman. That way also you can get introduced to people too. Um, often I'll find myself at a, a luncheon, for instance, and I'll be talking to somebody who will be in the senior care insurance world. And I'll say, oh, this, oh I know this person. This person has the senior care facility, right? And, oh, I know this person. They help seniors pack up their homes and move uh, to, to new housing locations, right? Like, and then you can connect those people who are all in that kind of that same contact field, right? And making those introductions is great, number one, because it helps them do what they do better and find a great connection for their business but it makes you look like a rock star. And that's the most important part because once their relationship builds, they're grateful for what you did, obviously that's gonna return upon you tenfold. Law of reciprocity in this universe, it always works out. Any questions? Matt, what's the Sharpie for? What's the card? Uh, the sharp, just to write down a note about who you met. I can't tell you how many times early on when I'd come out of that meeting and I'd have a dozen cards in my pocket, and I'd be like, well, I remember these four conversations, but 
how did I get these other eight cards, <laughs> right? And that's okay. Sometimes that happens, but that's that's the reason to have the sharpie. You can make a little note. Sharpie also works for glossy products. Yeah, yeah. Pens won't write on those normally. Um, so when you're working the crowd, right at the event, know what your target connections are. What type of people are you looking for? What kind of industries are they in? If your business is uh, adapt to throwing bachelorette parties, maybe you want to find wedding planners. Or if you're a videographer who does weddings or other things, you might want to do that, right? If you're in the real estate world like me, I'm not looking for loan officers or home inspectors because that's the back end of my world. My clients have already found a realtor at that point. I'm looking for financial planners and um, attorneys usually, particularly divorce attorneys because you get usually one sell and two buys. But that's the kind of target connections you're looking for. Know what kind of people are. If, if this particular person is very nice and they're warm and welcoming, but they don't line up with your industry, that's OK. We all came to this event for the same reason, to meet people that might be good referral resources. It doesn't mean you write them off or dismiss them, but that's not going to be a conversation you spend 30 minutes in. You want to move on to that next opportunity. Leverage relationships for an introduction. I mentioned that a little, you know, just a minute ago. Um, but if you see somebody that you already know talking to somebody that you haven't met yet but want to meet, that'd be an opportunity for, hey, good to see you. Could you tell me who you're, you know, talking with here? Trent, so good to see you, my friend. Please tell me about this awesome divorce attorney you just met. <laughs> right? Be interested, not interesting. Again, it's all about asking questions, right? The world's most interesting man is who he is because he doesn't say a whole lot. <laughs> Those commercials were great. Was it Heineken? I think. But be interested. Ask questions. Find out more. People love talking about themselves. I did it earlier. I spewed all over you about myself. Um, and then don't get sucked in, right? Uh, everybody knows that one person that they've met at a chamber function where you go down the rabbit hole and it seems to never end. Find opportunities to, uh, to move on. Again, great people, very nice, but we're here to, to make contacts and to make more connections. You can go deeper into those conversations later, right? About three to five minutes is kind of what I usually gauge if I'm at one of these chamber events. All right, now before you leave the parking lot, go through those business cards with your Sharpie, Trent. <laughs> uh, that's what you're going to do first. Make any notes if you have electronic resources, things like that, where you can follow up. Um, set reminders, and of course, the, the goal is to get meetings on the calendar. I want to touch on that just quickly. I have a really cool time management tip trick that I'll share. Um, the last time I taught here at Rasmussen, I did a class called How to Get More Done in Less Time. And that was well attended as well, good class. Maybe we'll get that back on the calendar sometime, Lori. Um, but one of the tips in there is to do what I call appointment stacking. Um, if, for instance, I have a block for on Thursday morning from 8 to noon open, and I got two or three different opportunities, contacts that want to talk to me about different things, one of them might suggest, oh, let's meet at Kowalski's for coffee. That's a great idea. Guess where I'm meeting for my second, my third, and possibly my fourth appointment, right? There's no reason these coffee appointments have to be an hour long. We just put them in hour blocks in our calendar for timing purposes. But you can tell them, hey, I got 45 minutes, right? That's OK. But that gives you 15 minutes to quick use the restroom and unwind and get ready for the next one before they come in. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of you know being effective in your meetings. And there's no reason that they have to drag on. Um, if they feel like they are sometimes. So be, be concise, be intentional, um, and then use that appointment stacking technique so that you can get more done in less time. Any questions there? Oh, you guys are too, too good to me. I'm going to be asking for some ahas at the end, by the way, OK? So strategize with the follow-up. That's how you capitalize on all the work you did at the actual event. 
you're never going to transact business at a chamber function, at least not likely. Um, but it's going to be in that follow-up. So one of the things that I would always do is follow up with a thank you note, handwritten if, if possible, uh, rather than an email or something electronic. Send them another business card, thank them for their time, let them know that you'll be following up to, to set a, a time to meet with them if that's one of your key contacts or somebody that you'd like to further um, build a relationship with. And the specific message, mention something specifically that they talked about. That's always helpful to uh, you know, let them know that you were paying attention, right, number one, uh, and that you care, right? People do business with people they know, like, and trust. Um, research some connections. I had a financial planner friend. Uh, he's still a friend. <laughs> but whenever I meet with him, he would come to the table with a, a LinkedIn printout that would have about three to five different mutual connections that he wanted a, a deeper introduction to in my, my network. And it was always his goal to get at least one or two appointments out of that meeting. So after we get done discussing business and going through all the stuff, and uh, we get to the end of it, he'd say, hey, here's, here's uh, five people. Is, it, is there one or two of these that you could get me connected to today? And that, that carried him into his next week of appointments. And he was consistently and constantly doing that. And that guy has one of the best <laughs> databases of people I've, I've ever met. And then make a follow-up call. Coffee, lunch, obviously people break bread with those whom they like. All right. Any questions on the chamber, business networking, that kind of stuff we talked about? Hey, Matt. Yes, sir. Why doesn't everybody do this? What's that? Why doesn't everybody do this? Because it's a lot of work, Tim. <laughs> Right. It's it's because you got to go out of your 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 comfort level, right? Like I'm a I'm a big personality profiling. I've taken all the the DISC and the EMFP and the what are you, Myers Briggs and, and Strengths Finders and all that fun stuff. I have a woo personality. For those of you that know me, you probably are not surprised. A woo personality is somebody that wants to get everybody like them. Coincidentally, that works well in my industry. To be open and honest with you in my real estate business, everything after the client decides they want to work with me is work to me. My fun's over. Oh, now I got to go show you homes and write a contract. I want to go out and meet more people that want to do that. <laughs> I want to go on more appointments and see if I can, you know, win the win the listing, right? That's like that's the part that gets me excited. I'm a woo personality. It's actually kind of a rare one. My mother always told me that. Um, but know kind of what your personality is too. Introverts can network too, right? You don't need to talk to everybody, right? You can be intentional. You can be more focused. It doesn't have to be twelve business cards. It could be three. The important part is that you get the one that matters and that you use that, that luncheon or that you know, after hours that you went to as an opportunity to build that next relationship. Right? Hey, question? Yeah. So Matt, do you think somebody that's really new to networking, just starting their business, he had to you know, kind of condense a few things or going to an event or mm -hmm. going to some you know, chamber event, what are just a, a few like Mm -hmm. and get comfortable in that environment. I know you went through a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. I, w I would say, number one, know your, your party, right? What, what type of event are you at? Who's, who's your target demographic, industry, you know, job type? What, wh who are you looking to meet, right, ideally? Um, Practice your elevator pitch, right? Who you are and what you do, just a quick. And then be interested, ask questions. That would be sum it up. Yeah, that would be my condensed version of this class. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> Sorry. That's OK. No, that's a great question. Thank you. Hi. Can I follow it up just one more? Kind of what you were saying. Um, let's say you're the new person who's taking over for being um, in the chamber. Sure. 
Rossi's name. A lot of you probably know um, has left, and now mm-hmm. I'm taking over for her. So how do you fill those shoes, and how do you do it in a way that fits your needs? You're an extrovert or introvert. You are happy to talk to people, but you're already trying to fill someone's shoes. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good news is, is you, you don't have her shoes, and you don't have to wear them. You wear your own shoes, and you network your own way, right? You represent the same company, and you still have the same objectives, but you, you don't have to do it like they did it, because there's no wrong way to network. Just to throw a couple things on there, there's a few people in here, and I promise I won't name names, but have said to me that they don't like the networking, that it terrifies them, and it's lots to do it, and we've done it well. So Robin, I think what the best piece of advice is, just show up, you know, and do the, the two work that, that Matt's saying. Um, for the chamber specifically, we're for ambassadors, that's their job. Um, as staff, as board members, yeah. we try to make sure that everyone feels welcome. But as staff, you know, we're limited. Um, so just for ambassadors. And then thirdly is um, with us, and, and maybe it's a different situation with that person, but we try to connect for people who don't want to go to the big city. But then you get to this connect group, and there's of you and then we must help people and you can say you know what let's all go to this thing together and then you all know 12 to 20 50 more people so um, maybe and, and it might be a different networking situation with the chamber but the, or you know they have ambassadors as well or something but just showing up is the most important yeah and the ambassadors are the ones like justin with the green ribbon on their uh, name tag you'll see them hanging out their, their motto is no one stands alone right you shouldn't be there by yourself um, standing alone at a chamber event. If you are, they should attack you. <laughs> uh, great, great group of people, though, and they're they're professional networkers. They've all been certified in my ninja class. Ninja certified. Um, and to Lori's point, um, consider the the different opportunities, right? The the size of the group. Um, I often talk about like your, your master networks or your BNI. They're very focused, one-on-one, industry-specific networking opportunities where you build deeper relationships. Uh, this chamber thing is, is a little more open-ended. You don't have, I, I, there's chamber members I've never met before, right? And that's okay. Um, but <laughs> to me, the chamber is like a gym membership. If I'm not going to show up, why am I paying the dues, right? I might argue, I don't know, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but in your history at the chamber, has anybody attended more events than I have? In the entire school system, yeah. Well, I can't say Matt, since you put me on the spot, I haven't seen him on as much. That's correct. (laughs) 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 No, but this, this is my gym membership, and... 2009, 10, 11, 12, right? I'm doing well, the I reps. I started in 17, but when I started, you were on the board. You had been an ambassador for quite a while. Um, you had been cutting through MIT, which is a thing. We were at all in this show at Purdue. Just have, um, for those that aren't necessarily extroverted, you can pop in and you will probably talk to one or two people. You'll get the picture. And if that feels okay, so it's safe to say. So if it doesn't feel okay, that's okay. <laughs> I was just thinking about that today, though. Like, I'm like, I don't know. I mean, because obviously I was a, a chamber member for six or seven years before you became our director, president, CEO, whatever the title is now. <laughs> but <laughs> over the years, and, and yes, it, I, I apologize. Yes, the last two years I've been a bit tardy. However, my goal for the last two years has been to spend more time on my boat. <laughs> so if I'm not selling homes or with my kids, yeah. <laughs> a lot of jellyfish, but you were there. I mean, you're, you're still there. What else? Yes, John. Real quick. Uh, tips and tricks for remembering names. Absolutely. So, by the way, there's absolutely nothing in this class that I created. <laughs> it's just all things that I've learned from others and regurgitated here today for you. Um, remembering names for me has always been... Um, Obviously, you introduce yourself. Number one, you see what side my, my name tag's on? We don't shake hands left-handed, right? We shake hands right-handed. So when you reach out to shake someone's hand, 
what's the first thing you look at? <laughs> All of my shirts that are embroidered with my business are on the left, so I can put my name tag on the right. But that's the reason, because that way the person looks up your arm, they see your name tag, right? John, nice to meet you, John, right? <laughs> but I use your name twice, right? And so keep, keep reusing that individual's name in, in conversation. People like to hear their name. And then when you're introducing them, hey, this is the guy I just met that does videography. No, 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 no. This is my friend John who makes professional videos, right? Aerial drone, all that stuff, right? So you're always using that person's name, especially early on, because when you look at their eyes and you say their name, your brain is writing that into your subconscious. There's like brain science on that way above my level. I, I was just a turf science. Huh? Who's your go-to uh, resource for becoming a better networker? Like books, authors, <sighs> Let's see. It's a good question, Trent. I haven't thought about that one. I got one for you. Tim? Yes, that's go. a great one. The one book. I bought that whole book for my Master Networks group See? back in 2016. Go-Giver? Yeah. The Go-Giver. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, that's an amazing book. Yeah. And it, and it's, it's a parable, so it's written in the, the, the shape of like a story about a guy. Um, and yeah, it's a great one. Jeffrey Gittimer has a book about networking. It's like a little red book about something or something cute like that it's called. Yeah. Got a lot of books. Of course, I was told as I got into my business career is that readers are leaders. And uh, you're always learning. My, my professor, Dr. White in college, said, you know, Matthew, congrats, you're graduating. And I'm so proud of you. And but just remember, when you get out of college, you never stop learning. And of course, I started learning about other things and <laughs> got out of what I went to college for, but I never stopped learning. Roger? You know what I found too is um, once you've made a contact, um, you know, there's so much information on the internet. I mean, you just look up somebody's name, mm -hmm. and there's LinkedIn, there's social media. I mean, by the next time you meet them, you know, it should be easy to carry on a conversation. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, if you think about it like dating, right, you're, you're having that first like initial meeting at the, the networking event, having a quick little, hey, nice to meet you. What do you do? Oh, I'd, I'd like to get together sometime and talk more about that, right? You schedule the coffee or the lunch type follow-up session. In the meantime, you do that homework where you figure out, hey, oh, this person also knows so-and-so, right? Um, I do that sometimes when um, business opportunities come into me uh, that I don't know that individual, right? Um, I'll, I'll get an email or a, a, you know, a name or a referral, something like that, and I'll look him up and be like, oh, okay, so this person is a lawyer, and oh, he's in, he's in, uh, in uh, immigration law. Oh, he knows my friend Vince. Vince is in immigration law. How do you know Vince? Oh, okay, now, now we got a conversation, right? It's commonalities. It's a comfortable conversation. It helps carry on building that relationship. Absolutely. Any other questions or ahas? I've liked the, those that you all have shared here. That's been really helpful. I think it's uh, important that you continue to use your gym membership. I mean, your chamber membership. Ha -ha. <laughs> Show up, take advantage of the dues that you paid. Continue to build relationships. Continue to do that heavy lifting, right? Um, I, I did have a little bit of... Uh, Social type networking, stuff that I taught for my Keller Williams class. I can buzz through that quick if you want me to. I think we got about, yeah, 15 more minutes. Otherwise, we can uh, call it a day and move on with our afternoon. 
I'll, I'll go it. All right. So just like I talked about the different chamber events, these different platforms have a different vibe to them. Okay. And I'm just going to give you the 30,000 foot overview. Facebook is like your backyard barbecue. Twitter is like a cocktail party. And LinkedIn is like a business meeting, like a chamber luncheon, basically, right? And so you want to be informal and social. You don't want to be direct selling in that environment. Sometimes you'll see me post pictures of like me and my client or something like that, or I'll share something from my business page that's about real estate. But I try to put anything business specific in my actual business page. I keep my personal profile to me and the kids and happy, fun, social things, right? Um, but that way I can passively tell people or remind them what I do. So if I see something crazy at a house that I'm showing or something like that, I might take a picture of it and be like, oh, you know, did your mom have this carpet too, right? Like, you know, we all know that brown carpet that's in the, in the parents' basement, right? It, it's fun things, but I don't have to say, I'm a realtor, if you want to buy or sell a home, call me, right? They're just, they're saying, oh yeah, Matt's out showing homes. Matt's a realtor. I don't have to direct sell in that type of situation. Keep it upbeat. Be a good listener. The main reason I go on Facebook is because I'm looking for people having babies, right? Having major life situations that cause them to maybe need a new home. Ta-da, right? So I'm, I'm paying attention to what's going on. I send a lot of birthday cards. I got some little baby bibs that I send out to let's say future first home home buyer. Um, I'm, I'm looking at doing some onesies next, I think is what I'm gonna do for that, but it's always fun. People take pictures of their kids and they post them. Yay, guess what, he's got my bib on, awesome. Avoid politics and religion, <laughs> voodoo. Because everybody's got a different opinion or a different background and that's okay, it's okay. We don't need to debate it, debate it on that plat platform. Uh, Twitter's fast-paced cocktail party. I choose not to participate because I just don't have the time. Things move too quick in that world. Opinions about Elon Musk aside. Um, and you got to be very hands-on because it's really being in conversation with people. In my industry, that's not one that's going to transpire into a business opportunity typically. And then LinkedIn. This is one I wish I used more. Um, sharing blog articles, things of value for homeowners. I have all these great ideas that I, you know, put in the idea bucket and it's, it's, it's full, it's full of great ideas. But to find the time and the energy to, to transform that into a, a really solid video or blog post about something that I could share on LinkedIn. Um, I, I, LinkedIn sends me the, you know, the weekly update or whatever and I'll see other realtors like, it's time to winterize your faucets and things like, and like, damn it, why did I do that again this year? I was thinking about doing that last year and the year before, and the, oh, wait, oh, it's been 20 years I've been thinking about doing this. It's okay, right? Hi, I'm still selling homes, life goes on, but you know, there's a lot of great ideas out there. The important part is, is that you pick one and focus on it and do a really, 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 really good job at it. And then you earn the opportunity to move on to another thing if you can keep that one going, right? Because we can't do all things, we can't be all things to all people we want to do what we do and do it well. My hero. All right. I have a prize for you all staying, which Dr. Trent Scheidecker loses out because he had to boogie. A book called The One Thing. Uh, Gary Keller, who is the founder and CEO of Keller Williams, or co-founder, I should say, um, has written six New York Times best-selling books. This is the most recent one. Uh, the one thing is packed full of uh, time management strategies and knowledge, a lot of which I had put into my other class that I mentioned, uh, which is getting more done in less time. Um, but this has been a, a huge help for me in increasing my effectiveness and my productivity in my business, and hopefully it will be for you as well. The only thing I ask is when you're done with it, don't put it on a dirty, dusty shelf. Just pass it on to someone else that you think might see value of it. That's all I ask. Cool? Any questions? So Matt, as you're drawing this, is there any way that these guys can do something next week to foster the relationship that they're developing today? You know, I'm so glad you asked, Lori. Katie. Kathy, Kathy I'm sorry. 
congratulations. Thanks. That'll be great for you. Um, I just happen to be hosting the business after hours. And for some of you that I've already met, may have seen I, I gave away four $25 gift cards yesterday to the Green Mill for people who are going to be at that event. It happens to be on Mardi Gras. Oh, okay. oh, oh yeah. <laughs> guess, guess who else ordered $100 of Mardi Gras paraphernalia? We got beads and face masks and all sorts of fun stuff. And uh, yeah, the business after hours is now from 4 to 6 p.m. It'll be taking place over at my friend Tim O'Brien's great Green Mill restaurant across from 3M off of 94 and Century Avenue. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Bring a friend. Come ready and armed to network. <laughs>